Good morning. Thank you for joining us here today. And I know that it's been a little different this Sunday morning as with the weather, but we wanted to, again, come to you with a message and a time of study today. And that's what I want to do. So I wanted to thank you again for joining in here with me this morning. And I want to share a message from the Word of God as we introduce today the idea of connecting to serve in 2021. Now, what I'm going to be doing today, I want to go ahead and let you know, my message is split into two different uh, sections today. So I want you to, if you will, take your Bibles and turn to the book of Genesis 2, 18. And then when you get there, then go ahead and turn over into the book of Romans chapter 6, verses 16 through 23. We're not going to be reading both of those at the same time, but here in just a little bit, I'll be referring to those. As today, we're going to be looking at connecting and then connecting to serve. You know, as we start our focus on connecting to serve, uh, we have to start with the idea of, as the Bible tells us in Genesis 2.18, that it's not good for man to be alone. God basically told, uh, said here in, the word of, uh, in his word, he said, the Lord God said, it's not good for that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. So when we look at this text, what we're seeing today is the idea of marriage. God, of course, we realize that after that, God took and formed Eve and then gave, joined Adam and Eve together. But it's not just in the marriage sense that man is not, it's not good for man to be alone, but God created us that we would be able to be with people. And because in our world today, with everything that we have going on, never before have we been more connected in a sense than we are today. As a matter of fact, we can uh, be, uh, speak to someone around the world uh, just about every Sunday morning or every Sunday afternoon, Martha and I will visit with our daughter, Sherry, who is, is working in Prague, in the Czech Republic. And so we get to actually visit with her face-to-face -face whenever we're joining together. So we're, we are connected to her in that sense. But also we can make contact with more people and have information at our very fingertips. But what is amazing to me is that even in, in our world today, with all of the, the, the ability to contact loneliness and disconnect are pandemics in their own right today. So I know we're dealing with the pandemic of the COVID virus, but my friends, listen to me. There's a pandemic of loneliness and disconnect. And that's what I want us to look at today. And that's the idea that I have as we move forward with the Connecting to Serve in 2021. I'm going to be doing a series of messages on connecting to people. And so the first thing that I want to look at and make absolutely sure that we understand is that man was made to connect. The Bible says here that it's not good for man to be alone. And so, but the idea of connect is to come together to form a link, that, that we are, we're not an island unto ourselves, and God never intended us to be that way. We're to always have that connection. And this is for marriage, and it's also for friendships. It's for church membership. It's for all, everything that we deal with in our lives that we are made to connect. But there's also from in, uh, connection is the idea of intimacy. Now, this is this, this closeness. Now, this is the closeness that even though we are able to make contact to people around the world instantly, there's still something wrong with the intimacy. It's that closeness, and this is where social media sites can't give this to us. That's where when we're posting on Facebook and we're looking at pictures and we're doing whatever it is that we do, that we can realize that we're not getting an intimate view of each other. And this is where we are struggling because I want us to look at the very first point is being made in God's image. God created us to love and to be loved. Because the Bible says in, in, that we are created in God's image. So God is love. We see in the New Testament that over and over it's described as God is love. God is love. And if we're formed in that image, then my friends, there is a need that we have to love and to be loved. So when God was forming man, he, he placed him in the garden, and he gave him the, the things that he wants him to do. And then he looked, in, and he knew in his infinite wisdom that he said, it's not good for man to be alone. He needs a helpmate. He needs someone there, someone to be close to him. So God created us to be that way. But it's not to be having short snippets of connection like we get through social media. There's so many people who try so hard to make that connection in just small little, small little snippets of pictures, again, of different things that we have in our lives. And we want to call that connection. 
We have thousands of friends. We have thousands of, of, of views that we have from each other. And, and man, that's connection, but that's not it. And that's why we're suffering from the pandemic of loneliness and disconnect. But we are being made in God's image. But because well, the second thing is we see is it's a great need in every person. That need for connection, that need for people to be around us. It's a deep sense of belonging is, is an irresistible need that we all have. We need something to fulfill us. We need something to give us. That's why, that's why so many people want likes and on, on their Facebook page. That's why so many people want so many numbers of friends. And, and they want all of this stuff because we, we have that need, that irresistible need. And so what happens to those many people, when that need isn't met, many of us or many others feel that need with money. They feel that need with, with power, fame, cars. We, we see drugs and alcohol. We see sexual intimacy taking place of real intimacy. And so this is the idea that we're looking at is that we have that need and every person is working so hard to, to fill that need that we have. As a matter of fact, we see in psycholo psychology today, the, the quote that I found was, the lack of connection is, greater, is a greater detriment to health in, oh, than obesity is, than smoking, or even high blood pressure. This lack of connection. We're seeing lives being destroyed because, again, man was made to connect. So when we look in 2021, that's one of our goals here at First Baptist West as our church is that we want to connect to people. We want to make intimate connections to people. We want to make intimate connections to God. We want to make intimate connections to the church. And we don't want people to feel like they have to go out somewhere else to, to bring in that intimacy, that feeling of, of connection and fulfillment, because there is this need that we all have to be a part of people's lives. So we see here again in this text, the Bible says that even when God said this, it is not good, it is not good for man to be alone. That's never the way we were intended to be. And we are seeing the detriments of that in our society today. Even though we have all of these forms of, of connection, even though we have all these forms of information coming to us, we're seeing a sense of loneliness. We're feeling a sense of disconnect. And it's sweeping across our nation and our world today. But as we move forward from here, our goal is that we can have a connection because man is made to connect. The second thing that we look at today is not only is are we man was made to connect, but man was made to serve. Man was made to serve. We look in this text in verse 15 that I just read from, up above this just a few moments ago. The Bible says, then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to, to tend and to keep it. So God created Adam to serve. And so when he brought Adam and Eve together, they were to serve together. They were to serve each other. So all of us are meant to serve. So we're connected. Uh, made, man is made to connect, but also man is made to serve. The thing that I want us to understand, my friends, is we are all servants of something. We are all servants of something. We may think we're not. We may think that we're our own people, but it's very clear we serve something. Look in the Bible in Romans 6. In the book of Romans, chapter 6, starting at verse 16, it says, Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are the one slaves to whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? So it says, do you not know that you're, we're all slaves to something? We all serve something in some way, some form. Now, many don't like hearing this. I hear people all the time say, well, I'm my own person. I do what I want. I don't like being told what to do. And so we think, well, we're our own selves. We're going to step away from all authority. We're going to become our own authority. Do you just understand what you've just said, though, when you say something like that? When I'm my own authority, then I do what my old natural self does. I'm a, I'm a slave to that. The Bible says very clearly again, do you not know to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey. Now, the thing that we've got to understand, we're going to obey something, and so the Bible tells us that we're either slaves to sin 
or we're a slave to righteousness. It goes on in verse 17, says, But God, be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as, as slaves of uncleanness and the lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit uh, to holiness and the end of everlasting life. So we're seeing here again that we are either slaves to sin or slaves to righteousness. So we who want to declare ourselves free and independent from anything, we're not going to serve man, we're not going to serve God, we're not going to serve the church, we're not going to serve this, we're not going to serve that. We're going to serve ourselves. Do you know, realize then who you are. The Bible says that we are sinners. And so when I want to just serve myself, I am now a slave to my own selfish desires. Everett Harrison says it like this. There is no middle ground, no place in the Christian experience where one is free to set his own standards or go his own way. Everything we decide whether I'm a Christian or whether I'm not, is decided based on either God's leading or my own natural leading. So we're not free from anything. We Listen, my friends, you and I are all servants. Just depends on to whom we're going to be servants to. If I'm a Christian and I claim Christ in my life, then everything I do, everything I do as a, as a man, Everything I do as a husband, everything I do as a pastor, everything I do as a dad, everything I do in every aspect of my life should be not by what I think, but by what God desires. So I am now serving under righteousness. So again, everything that I decide, everything that you decide to do as a Christian is based on God's leading. And if you choose not to do that, then it's based on your own selfish leadings, your own as we talked about even last week, that old nature that desires its own thing, that all we want to do is serve what we want, how I want it. I want to be able to deal with people the way I want to deal with them. I want to be able to speak to them the way I want to speak to them. I want to be able to, to, to act any way I want to act. Then what you're doing is you're yielding yourselves over to your own intimate desires, which means then that that's leading not to righteousness, but that's leading to death. So again, we are all servants of something, my friend. We are made to serve. Now what we've got to understand is one idea of servant leads to death, but the other idea of servant leads to righteousness. So even as Christians... We still have that decision to make on a daily basis as the Bible calls for us to die to ourselves. Why? Because I'm a sinner and, I, and, and, and everything that I want in my own natural state is to be away from God. I may want to decorate it up with God. I may put pretty little things on it. I may title it God. But if it's not of him, then it leads to death. Even for a Christian, when I decide to do my own things, what it basically does is it's going to lead uh, to death of our relationships. In my marriage, if I decide to do what I want to do and only what I want to do, it doesn't matter about my wife, then that's going to lead to the death of a relationship. If I want to do things in, in the church the way I want to do it, well then what that's going to do is that's going to lead to death to our families, the church. If I decide that I want to do whatever it is I want to do, then, of course, it's going to be death to even, even our testimonies, my friends. Even to our testimony to the world. When I want to declare to the world the goodness of God, but then I turn right around and I serve my own selfish interest, saying and doing only that which I want to do, what I think is right, 
regardless of what the Bible says, then what I've done is I've ruined my testimony to the world about who Jesus Christ is to me. And so when we look at this again, we see that we're going to serve somebody or something. And if I choose to do it outside of the ideology of God, then we know that it's death. Because if we were to keep reading in verse 23, for the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. There's our choice. Sin or righteousness. I and you have been created to connect to people. It is not good for man to be alone. But we are also, we are also formed and made to serve. Part of our service is going to lead to death or it will lead to righteousness. That which we decide to do, but that's our choice. God lays it out for us. So we're either going to serve one or the other. And the last part that I want us to look at is this idea of connected to serve. Put those two things together. We, we, are, we are created to connect. means that we are to form a, a, a unity. We're to form a bond. We're to have this closeness with people in our lives. But then we're also connected to serve in three capacities. And we're going to be looking at, over the next several weeks, the three capacities of this. And that is to serve God, which is our, our vertical connection, and then our horizontal connection is to the church and to people. So when we look at connecting to serve, we serve God. Can I tell you, we serve him, and we only serve him through surrendering our lives over to Jesus Christ, through having been saved. There are so many people, I believe, that are trying to have a connection with God, and we're going to be looking at that over the next several weeks, a connection to God by just the head knowledge, just by the physical things that we can do by coming to church or going to Sunday school, even, even reading the Bible. But that's not that connection that God desires. God connects to, God wants, desires for us to be connected to him on an intimate level. And the only way that we can do that is surrendering our, our lives over to Jesus Christ. So we surrender and we're connected to God to serve by salvation. So my question today is, has there been that point in your life that you realize that you have a need for Jesus? And you have, a, you have sin in your heart. You realize that you feel alone. There's no hope. And that you've been trying to fill it with all this other stuff. But today you finally come to realize that's what's been missing. It's that one true connection with Jesus Christ. And today I want to be connected to him. I want to serve God. I want to be connected to him through, through Jesus Christ. Even though I've been trying to do it through the church. I've been trying to do it through, through study. I've been trying to do it through all these other aspects. But today I want to connect to God through Jesus. Man, I want you to do that this morning. I, I, I want you to understand that that's why God created you. That it's not good for you to be alone. You need the connection to God. And he sent Jesus to die on the cross so that you could have it. You don't have to settle for some semblance of connection, some Facebook-style connection with God. Man, he wants to know you. And next week, I'm going to be looking even deeper into that thought of how God has blessed us so much that he, we, he can and desires for us to be in his presence. So we're connected to serve to God through salvation. The second one is that, that we're connected to the church, to, to the local body, that we are joined together as brothers and sisters, and, and we're to be connected to a local church. It's, it's important to be that way. I know so many people that want to try to go it alone and feel like there's no need to the church, but what happens is that, as we're going to talk about later on, is that we, so many people try to connect to the church without having a connection to God through Jesus Christ. And of course, then if you do that, the church is going to leave you empty. The church is going to leave you cold. The church is going to do all these things because you can't connect to the church apart from connecting to Jesus Christ. But we do, do need to connect to the local body. But we do that through Jesus Christ. So we, we're going to talk about connecting to serve the church. 
I've been sharing with you over the last several weeks how, how it's important that all of us serve in the church. And there's so many things that are needed in the church, so many ways people can serve, and we're going to be looking at that over the next several weeks as well. But not only t- connected to serve God or connected to serve the church, but the third component is connected to serve people, our neighbors, those people that God brings to us every single day. And we're to connect to people. We're con- to connect to people outside of the church. And we're going to be looking this year at so many different ways that God has set, for us, set up for us to be able to connect to people, to be able to go outside of our church and to serve whether it's even uh, next week that we get to go to the bridge ministry to, to, to serve meals. If, if it's just to go out and help our neighbor across the street. If it's just to make a connection to, to the person who, uh, who we come into the restaurant with. But God is calling us to make connections because that's the way we were created. We were made to connect and we were made to serve. But let me emphasize one more thing here at the very last. The most important part of this is that you are connected through Jesus Christ. Don't try to connect to people apart from Christ. Don't try to connect to the church apart from Christ. And this is why so many people are hurt. This is why so many people even in the church that feel disconnected because we're trying to connect to two things apart from the first thing. The most important connection we can ever make, my friends, is our connection to God through Jesus Christ. So as we get ready to move on over the next several weeks, talking about connecting to serve, can I have you just pause for a moment? Just for a moment and and say, God, what is my connection with you? What is my connection with you? Oh, not that I, I know the word, I've, I've memorized scripture, I've, I've joined the church, I've, I've been baptized, I've, I've served on the Sunday school board, I've done all these things. Not that. God, am I connected to you through Jesus Christ? Do we have an intimate relationship? We can't do this alone, my friends. Not one of us were made to go it alone. But you have a choice. Connect and serve. We're going to connect to something. And we're going to serve something. One leads to death. One leads to righteousness. I want to pray over you right now. That God would be speaking to your heart this morning. That you could sense such a peace that only he can bring that you can sense such a strength, an encouraging spirit, and that today, maybe for the first time in your life, you truly feel connected to God because you, you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. Would you do that this morning? I want to pray that over you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you today, and God, I pray for everyone that's watching this. I ask God that you... You speak to our hearts. You speak to our lives. And God, let us not be trying to rationalize all of this stuff out. But Lord, let let us just for a moment pause and listen to you. God, you created us to connect and you created us to serve. So Lord, it's with that that I ask you to speak to everyone that's watching this video that's joining in with us this morning. And God, if there's someone today that doesn't know you as their Savior, I pray, Lord, that you would would call their name today and they would surrender themselves over to an intimate relationship with you. And that, Father, you, you would save them today. And that, God, if there's anyone here that, Lord, may have been trying to to connect it to so many other things, Lord, but they've fallen short and they're feeling empty, that, God, you would speak to them. Bring fulfillment to us today, Lord, with that relationship with you through Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for those who 
know you, but Lord, maybe, maybe for whatever reason they've begun to look for other things, make connections to other things, serving themselves, serving the world. But Lord, today they want to come back to you. I pray, God, you would open up their minds and their hearts of service. Work in us today, Lord. Work in us today. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Listen, I want to thank you for joining in today, tuning in on this service. And, and I pray that God has spoken to your heart. And, and I pray that you'll leave today this program knowing that you have that connection that is so desperately needed in the hearts of man. If you have any questions or anything that we can help you with, please Call us here at First Baptist West. We are, we'll be anxious to, uh, to help you in any way we can. But we thank you for joining us. We hope you'll join in with us this Wednesday. Uh, there'll be no activities, of course, tonight in our, after, after in the evening services. There'll be no activities there. We want everybody to stay home. Have a great uh, uh, Valentine's Day. Be safe. Stay warm. And we'll hope to see you in person next Sunday morning. God bless you and good day. Mm -hmm.